Ready to take your business to the next level? Tune in to Talking Business in 60 Minutes, the ultimate on-air business program hosted by the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce and the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association. Join us every last Wednesday of the month from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. as we dive deep into the latest market trends, insightful interviews with industry experts, and invaluable tips to help you succeed in the business world. Get inspired, stay informed, and unlock the secrets to entrepreneurial success. Interact with our guests with live call-ins or get an opportunity to share and be part of the conversation. Don't miss out on the opportunity to empower yourself and your business. Talking business in 60 minutes, every last Wednesday of the month from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Right here on your favorite radio station, Kyrie FM, 107.9, 93.1, 91.1, 88.9. And also via all our social media platforms and Flow TV channel 953. Brought to you by the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce in collaboration with the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association and Kyrie FM. And today we are here with two special guests and of course my co-host here is with me and we're talking about financial management. How do you work your cash? I am Cohen John Baptist, Executive Director of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, DIC, Dominica's number one representing firm, association, company representing the private sector. And with me is my lovely co-host, Rhea. Hi, everybody. Um, I am Rhea Williams. I am the current Executive Vice President of Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association, or DHTA. Um, DHTA is a member-driven uh, organization that represents and advocates on behalf of any business within the tourism or the hospitality industry. Uh, I'm excited about this opportunity and uh, thank you for our guests, to our guests for being here tonight. Yes, and today we have two subject matter experts in the financial management game. We have Mr. Brenton Hillier and Ms. Luana, Luana Laura. And uh, 
Brenton will go ahead and introduce himself, tell you a little bit more about him, what he represents, where he represents, and you know his vast knowledge. insurance industry for about 40 years now with experience in both sales and administration so I have an understanding of how the industry works both from the front end and the back end of the industry. I have experience in accounting, I have my certified accounting technician qualification before I switch into insurance, moved into insurance. So I'm I fell in love with it because I see where it fits in both from a personal perspective also from a business perspective. Awesome, awesome. I told you, subject matter experts. <laughs> and also, we have the lo lovely Miss Finance Focus, <laughs> Luana Laura. how to manage their business and personal finance. We are also a business support firm which assists in many different services that we know that the MSMEs need the support in. And we've been around for about seven years. We started off by giving financial content on social media, not only from an academic point of view, but also from personal experience. So we continue to grow and share that knowledge based on our engagement in the industry. I also work with Kobe, I'm the treasurer of the IC and we continue to work hand in hand to support MSM. It's, it's, it's great. It's awesome. I told you. Subject matter experts. <laughs> and it's just great to have um, two of my board members here today. Um, this is our first, our first episode of Talking Business in 60 Minutes and I'm just happy that they're here to support this wonderful program. We know that this is a great start off. And it's going to be a very interesting program in Dominica. And uh, like Luana said, we know that the MSMEs, the micro small businesses, these are they are the backbone of the economy, of any economy. So we are really happy that we support the small business sector and we ensure that they have a pillar, um, some ground to sign on. Um, you know that leads into one of our main our main discussion today, which is how do you work your cash? And I have a I, I think we're gonna start off right off the bat, right, Ria? Right. Awesome, awesome. And we want to talk about savings and insurance. I know a lot of persons speak about when it comes to finances. The key thing is saving. Where do you save? How do you save? And also insurance. You know. I mean, I'm not sure if it's because of Brenton's great management skills, but I know I always have Sajik, someone from Sajiko knocking on my doors <laughs> regarding insurance and making sure you know you get on board. So my question really is, what strategies or what, what advice would you give to MSMEs and businesses out there when it comes to saving, saving and insurance? And who would like to go first? <laughs> Uh, the savings component, because you know we are insurance experts in the room. <laughs> um, when it comes to savings, many times we believe that we are limited just in the amount of cash that we have. So we consider everything else and then savings. But what I like to recommend when it comes to savings is to focus on the habit and consistency. Many people believe that if they cannot save 100 200 500 dollars a month, it may be it's not possible for me to save at all. And we would prioritize all of our other expenses and then put something aside if there's any more remaining. But when it comes to savings, one should focus on the high and consistency, discipline of your support. A little money aside. Mm -hmm. If this month you can save twenty, you can put twenty. Next month fifty, next month after that it's only ten. You put it from a from a personal point of view. Throughout earning your sales, you should consider a component of cash to put aside for rainy. What are your cash reserves like? What are your contingency plans? So you should 
But you know, a lot of persons make the or they create they, they say that when it comes to saving, do I if I don't have enough, how do I save? You know, um, person will say as a business person or a small business owner, you the, the cash, the revenue that they gain, it goes straight into basically the next month running the operations. Do you still believe that businesses can save? I mean, if you can attempt to save, and, and it stems from your cash flow management strategies. You're not only working to create sales, how quickly do you collect cash so that you can operate and save? This is an area that many small businesses neglect because we're, most of us are working and we're in a cycle of just earning and spending on our costs, buying inventory, servicing the other needs that we have in life. And we fail to, we, we neglect the fact that the business has to be sustained on something. Mm -hmm. That is true. So how, how efficient are you in managing your cash flow? Do you understand your numbers, first of all, to know that you can or cannot see? Mm. And that's where we should start, understanding our numbers. And the, uh, the key aspect of that is keeping records of your numbers because a lot of it we think we have sales, we collect the revenue, and then we spend it a dollar here, a dollar here, a dollar over here without actually having a separate business account to track all our revenue and track all of our expenses. And that's a key aspect. No, Ria just raised a point, something that came to my mind. Because, okay, I may not have a business, but I know privately, as well. for myself, I, I went to the bank and I created another account for saving. But the bank made the mistake, and I'm not I, the bank made the mistake. <laughs> And they provided a link between <laughs> both accounts. So when I went to my mobile game, I saw a link. So every time I need money, I just send it to a person. So what type of advice would you give to a small business? I guess persons may have the same experience as I do. To not touch that money. How do you not touch that money? <laughs> Understand your spending habits and make some room to save yourself for the future. So we had that. The main thing that she said to me, I, I that stood out, is discipline. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be disciplined. Now, Brenton, when it comes to the insurance part of it, I remember speaking with one of the insurance agents, um, Mr. Simon. I'm a great agent, I must say. You know, just I'm just giving a little kudos. You know, give him a little kudos. Um, but you know, he mentioned to me um, with the insurance, do you know that you can actually save? A lot of people think when you hear insurance is another reason for them to give up money. Give up money. So, what advice would you give persons when it comes to insurance? Okay, so tying in the discussion of saving and linking in the topic of insurance is one that we have to understand. We often about saving as just putting money aside, but there should be a difference between money put aside for emergencies and money put aside to reinvest into the business. Because mm. oftentimes in running a business, we get in a habit of just running a day by day schedule. We wake up, we go to work, we make some sales, we go to sleep, we get up, we go to work, we make some sales, we go to sleep. But you should never lose sight of the long term. I see my business in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, that's as far as you're supposed to think. And from that, based on your goals, you're supposed to say, to achieve a certain target, to really increase my productive capacity, I need to start putting money aside specifically for that, which is separate from the quote-unquote rainy day funds. Now, in 
pursuing those strategic goals of the business, you also have to consider the risk that is attached to the business. And that is where we come into play. We often overlook sitting down and analyzing where the risks are. Now, in running a business, there are four ways to deal with risk. You can choose to accept the risk. You can choose to mitigate the risk. Choose to avoid the risk altogether, or you can choose to transfer the risk. Now, if I can use a simple example uh, of somebody running a restaurant, what is the biggest risk to the person running the restaurant? From where we can assist, one of the ways, for example, could be ensuring the equipment as simple as that. Coming from Hurricane Maria, I heard of several stories where houses were flooded, where restaurants were flooded, and you're talking about assets, your equipment, your furniture being washed away and now we have to use some money to buy those things back. Content insurance is something that is available, it's affordable and it's something that can manage that risk by transferring it from you all together to ensure that should something occur, you're not put back in a disadvantage but you are able to continue operating and it ties in the whole thing of resilience. Resilience is not necessarily preventing the damage, but it's about how quickly the bombs back. And that is where That's we it. come in. Now, insurance is a very broad topic. There are several different ways that we can assist businesses and persons. Another risk could be what happens to the business after it dies. Uh, we see that in Dominica, not just Dominica, in the Caribbean, a lot of businesses are family run. That is so true. It's tight. The grandparents started it, passed it to the son, and that cycle continues. And oftentimes, these persons don't pay themselves a fair salary. I mean, I deal with entrepreneurs. <laughs> I would ask, you know, how much do you make for my business? And they say, I give myself 2,000 pounds. So they choose to give themselves a reduced income because they're thinking about reinvesting into the business. But the thing is, if that person who has the institutional knowledge is no longer available to run a business. Where does that knowledge come from? And we can try to say that our children will pick it up, but our children may not have the insight to run a business as we did. So two things have to happen, either one of two things. You either have to hire someone who has the skill set already, or then you have to look into training your children or carry on the legacy to reach to your level to run a business at the same level. And that's another area where we can assist where it is called human insurance. So the business owns the policy on the life of the key person so that in the event of they not being around, money is made available instantaneously to be injected back into the business. So you have your legacy to carry forward. So that's just a few areas, but one of the key areas that I encourage our entrepreneurs to Yeah, about health insurance, but from a business perspective, going back to what Luana mentioned, saving for emergencies, some of us try to save for medical emergencies, which is near impossible. None of us can predict what will happen, how it will happen, when it will happen, why it will happen. We will just know that one day our health is affected. And there's the old saying that health is what? When you are a sole proprietor, Every day you stay down, it's money your business is losing. That is a risk to your business. That's a risk that could kill your business. You being sick. So you should have some kind of risk management measure to ensure that if you fall sick, you bounce back as quickly as possible. So yes, you have your rainy day fund there, but a portion of that should be towards risk management. I think, generally speaking, oftentimes we take that aspect in running our business for granted. What are the risks that exist in the business? What should I transfer? What can I handle on my own? And then for those I cannot handle on my own, what is available to assist me with it? That's awesome. So the That's composition awesome. is going to be different for yeah. everyone. Yes. Because Definitely. everyone has yes. different level of risk. And I have, speaking from the, the tourism and hospitality um, sector of our economy, um, one of the biggest 
biggest um, concerns that I hear with regards to insurance is cost. Right? Um, it's too expensive. We, we can't afford it. We're priced out of the market. So with regards to that, how would you suggest that we hold that conversation with our members or with these business owners um, in terms of not just saying, yes, you have to get insurance, but how do we have the conversation as to, you know, why and why the cost is beneficial to you and your law firm, right? Um, and then I have a second question. Um, with regards to coverage, is it possible to tie um, content or um, content insurance, you know, for the shames with liability insurance, or do you must property coverage with a liability policy? Okay. If I go to that, I wanted to touch on one more thing that COVID mentioned. So we do have policies that offer cash value. It's a policy where over the time you're able to develop funds and you can access those funds in the form of a loan. And a lot of people don't know share that with you and listeners, Disney World was actually starting with a life insurance policy. Mm. So what occurred was that there was Disneyland in California at the time, and we had this idea of creating Disney World insurance on a different level. We went to the bank, and the bank told them, no, they didn't huh. see the vision. So you had a policy, you went into it, you took a loan, and then you started the foundation, and well, Brent, Brenton is sharing some some insights here that <laughs> um, is new to me, <laughs> so I, I think I have to really consider insurance a little bit better. But we are going to take a short break right now, um, just to give some recuperation. <laughs> Attention all business enthusiasts and entrepreneurs. Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Tune in to Talking Business in 60 Minutes, the ultimate on-air business program hosted by the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce and the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association. Join us every last Wednesday of the month from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. as we dive deep into the latest market trends, insightful interviews with industry experts, and invaluable tips to help you succeed in the business world. Get inspired, stay informed, and unlock the secrets to entrepreneurial success. Interact with our guests with live call-ins or get an opportunity to share and be part of the conversation. Don't miss out on the opportunity to empower yourself and your business. Talking business in 60 minutes every last Wednesday of the month from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. right here on your favorite radio station, Kyrie FM, 107.9, 93.1, 91.1, 88.7. And also via all our social media platforms and Flow TV channel 953. Brought to you by the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce in collaboration with the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association and Kyrie FM. Attention all business enthusiasts and entrepreneurs. Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Tune in to Talking Business in 60 Minutes, the ultimate on-air business program hosted by the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce and the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association. Join us every last Wednesday of the month from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. as we dive deep into the latest market trends, insightful interviews with industry experts, and invaluable tips to help you succeed in the business world. Get inspired, stay informed, and unlock the secrets to entrepreneurial success. Interact with our guests with live call-ins or get an opportunity to share and be part of the conversation. Don't miss out on the opportunity to empower yourself and your business. Talking business in 60 minutes. Every last Wednesday. Hi, and thank you so much for being here at Talking Business in 60 Minutes. And again, we have two lovely guests here with us, um, the experts in the financial management business, 
um, Luana Laura and Brenton Hillier. And just before we went in break, um, my lovely co-host Rhea, she um, posted two questions, I think, to Brenton. Um, I think she, she's going to go ahead and just... Go Try to repeat the question again. Oh, well, I, mean, I recall the question, so if you want, I could just go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. So at the end of the day, it's a decision that we all have to make for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, insurance is a very vital tool in management of our businesses, but going back to the whole risk management aspect, we have to decide whether or not. We want to transfer the risk or we accept the risk. I mean, unfortunately, we see what is happening in the world. It's not just Dominica, it's not the Caribbean, but it's a worldwide, worldwide issue. And because of that, insurance rates across the world have been increasing. It's not specific to the Caribbean. And what a lot of people don't understand is that most insurance companies have an insurance company at the back end for themselves. We call them reinsurance. Now, the way the reinsurance companies work is that they provide support for the players, but it's based on what's happening in the world. So even if one year we go through if no hurricanes in Dominica, if America has earthquakes and those fires, mm -hmm. that's going to cause the rate to increase, and we have to increase our rates because of what we have been charged by them. So. They support us, and we cannot see ourselves operating without them. Perfect example is coming out of Hurricane Maria. If we did not have that support, then we would have had serious challenges. So it is tough, but it is a part of running a business. Now, just to share an example, going back to risk management, there is a type of insurance called parametric insurance. It's a new concept for the Caribbean, but something that exists in the world. And Wimbledon, the tournament, mm -hmm. in 2003, 2004, they decided to take parametric insurance against the event of not being able to host the tournament. That insurance cost them 1.9 million annually, US, mm -hmm. roughly. That's from 2003 to 2020. They paid that for 17 years, not claiming, mm -hmm. but every year putting out a 1.9 million US. Now, for them, going back to risk management, they understood that the core nature of their business was dependent on that tournament. If the tournament could not occur, then that would affect them significantly. So it's a risk that they decided, regardless of the cost, we cannot accept that. So they had to just sacrifice. 17 years later, COVID happened. The insurance kicked in, and they got $142 million. So they would have paid over $41 million over the 71 years, and they got back 142. So it's because they understood the nature of the risks and how it would impact the business. So, for example, in the hotel industry, your business is based solely on being able to sell rooms. And if that is not available, your business will have a serious challenge. So you have to make a decision as to, am I going to accept the risk or am I going to make the sacrifice and put that in place? Now, you may not see the benefit in the first year, in the second year, just like Wimbledon. It took them 17 years, but the event occurred. We live in the part of the Caribbean where hurricanes are always passing by. They always come and say hi, whether it's towards the north or towards the south. They always pass. So it's a serious risk that we have to consider. And I'm really grateful to Mr. Greg Nassif when he launched the new block of the hotel. In his speech, he said that insurance played a significant part in they being able to build back and build back in the way that they did. It's because they did their risk management studies. They understood that that risk was just too big for them, and they sacrificed. So we as entrepreneurs have to make that decision. It's going to be a tough decision, but you have to think about the long-term sustainability of your business. In terms of liability insurance, it is offered, but it is not offered on its own, unfortunately. So the business would first have to insure their property and then act attach the liability insurance to it. Okay. We can so, offer, okay. yeah, and for the benefit of other entrepreneurs who may be listening, it may not be the hospitality sector, but if you're running a business like a restaurant and you're renting space, you don't have to get the property insured first. You can cover the contents and then add on liability to it. 
Okay, so for accommodations, that latter option is not available to cover contents. And the the property like must be insured. I was, yes. I was hoping. I was hoping. I was trying yes. to just slide it in. <laughs> yes. Yes. I have to make sure. Yes. We have to make sure. Brenton brought up the two things came to mind. He said, basically mentioned about insurance. When it comes to business, insurance is not just for individuals. It's also for equipment. I think that's a key thing that we have to take a look at. Especially small businesses, you you spend so much money on your equipment, especially the manufacturing um, companies, Correct. um the, the the JD's Naturals, um B's Natural. I know that um even Lana from mm -hmm. Eclat Nova Luxuries. Yes. Um, when she mentioned about she, we spoke about some of the equipments that she used and showed me the the cost for these equipments and maintaining the equipment. I mean. Like Brenda said, oh, unwanted neighbors are always around the corner. <laughs> and uh, we really need to make sure that we secure those uh, equipments for any potential risk. So that's a key thing. I think we really need to take a look into ensuring your equipment to make sure that you have them for tomorrow. Right. And we know before us in school, when I heard insurance, I know the definition was make sure you mention risk. <laughs> <laughs> but no... I'm hearing resilience. Yes. So insurance ties in great with resilience. Yes. And I think that is um, something that we often overlook, right? With, especially if regards to our businesses. We, see, we hear insurance and we think, okay, the house, the building, very seldom do we think equipment, but the house, the building, our life, and if we get sick, we don't think in terms of the continuity of our business um, and a key part of that is succession planning so in having that i forgot what you call it, insurance that policy <laughs> that he just said um, in having a policy like that it will fill the gap while your successor actually gets your feet wet and starts taking over so that that really is is great to know so the, you know it's good nice yes Go ahead. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Brenton mentioned um, again the unwanted neighbors that we had. And we know that this is not just something that affects the Caribbean, but the world on its own. We recently had, <laughs> I don't like calling it name because you know, like I said, Beetlejuice, if you call it, it will come to you. <laughs> I try not to call it because I really don't want it to come again. But for two years, we, we kind of went through this pandemic. Um, we heard through that time that a pandemic, you don't directly feel the impact of it right away. It's four or five years down the line, you're going to see the, the major effects of the pandemic. And Dominica is, is even more special than most some of the other islands or countries in the entire world. Just before the pandemic, we had two natural disasters that we had right. that mm -hmm. affected us, where the government and... Businesses had to put resources into trying to build back better, put it into medicals, and so on. Um, what advice would we give to, do, can you give um, Luana or Brenton to business professionals, young and mature business professionals, to effectively manage your finance in this current economy that we're going through right now? <laughs> Um, thank you, Colleen. I think that this thing that we should do as business professionals, as individuals in any industry, is to understand our local economic climate. Many times we, we overlook the fact that we're in some considerable times where we need to place extra focus on financial management. When it comes to understanding our local economic climate, we should follow the news. Many of us, we, we isolate to local news, but also we should extend our knowledge for regional and international news to understand, of us. to understand how that impacts our economic climate. Okay. So the research, and once we get that information, whether it's new, new policies, new initiatives, new opportunities that may be available in our local climate, we seek to adapt. As a business owner, as a business professional and individual, this is how we grow in life. This is how we pivot, by adapting to our current circumstances, 
by also trying to predict the future. Right? So the first thing we should do is understand our local economy climate. And secondly, we're here discussing financial management. Build a solid financial foundation. And how do you do that? Manage your cash. Manage your debt levels. Save, if you can. Try to save. Plan for the future. Understand your risks. As a and see how many of us know the degree of risk that we're exposed That's to. True. And as we, as we grow, as we age, as we progress in business, our risks change. That so that's, that's an area that you should also focus on in, in building for the future. <laughs> so, interesting topic, I <laughs> always smile when I have that discussion with persons. <clears throat> Every economy has its challenge. Now, outside of insurance and accounting, I also speak to some persons about strategic management. And oftentimes, I realize that we as business owners may have challenges because we do not go through the exercise of strategically thinking. I mentioned earlier that we sometimes go in a routine, get up, work, go to sleep, get up, work, go to sleep. But every now and then, we have to go in our dark space. Now, it don't necessarily have to be a dark space, but when I say dark space, I mean a quiet area where we sit and we think and we analyze. Luana made some points. Part of that analysis is what is happening in my environment. <clears throat> now, the nature of running a business means that you have to expect challenges. It's part of running business. Business is about taking on risk, working for the risk, and making money despite of the risk. And when you look at the definition of strategy, strategy from wikipedia.com says it is a long-term view of being successful in spite of challenges, to paraphrase it. So we have to expect challenges as business owners, whether it's in Dominica, St. Lucia, America. Right now we see America is going through the same thing that we're going through, closing down, downsizing. That is a part of running business. And I think we take it for granted in not spending enough time to understand what's happening around us. We have to understand our numbers. Where are we spending the most? Where should we cut back on certain expenses? Who are our best clients? Who brings in the most revenue for us? And how can we attract more of those people to ens ensure that I can continue to be successful? Where do I have leakages in my business? When I say leakages in my business, where are the loopholes that are causing me to be inefficient and to lose money? These are things that we have to constantly assess and evaluate for us to be successful. There is Jeff Bezos, he's retired now, but for those of us who may have read about him, when he was CEO of Amazon, every week he would have a strategic meeting with his team. So every week they came together and said, guys, what is eBay doing? What is Alibaba doing? What is selling for us? What is not selling for us? And based on that, they made tweaks. You may not realize it, but every time you go on Amazon, there's some small change designed to get more money. Right now, you see this line saying, people who looked at similar items of yours bought this. Or you looked at this recently and you may consider this. These are things that they put on us slowly, but it's because they understand what's happening. We as entrepreneurs have to reach that level. And when we reach that level, regardless of what is happening in the economy, in society, we can be successful. Just the matter of marketing and advertising. There is a saying that I think we take for granted. If you advertise to everyone, you advertise to no one. And we have to understand that once we identify who our best clients are, we tailor the message to focus on those people. We will not reach everyone, which should not be the objective. So in summary, all of these things come together and help businesses to survive during any challenge that they're facing, whether it's a natural disaster, whether it's an economic downturn, whether it's social unrest, whatever it is, because businesses here in this world today have survived it. I can give you another example. No, I love insurance. So <laughs> JCPenney is a company that has been around for a while. And they 
were in the period of the Great Depression, Great Depression in America, money was an issue. The owners had life insurance, they had cash value in the policies, so what they did was they used the cash value from the policies to continue to pay salaries and pay the bills until the depression passed. So once again, they understood the risk and they had plans in case those risks manifested itself. So if we do the exercise of looking at our businesses strategically, we understand the risk, we can start putting plans in place for in case they are manifested. Awesome. Okay. Um, I loved both of your responses, <laughs> and <laughs> I loved it. Um, and one of the, the, the key takeaways, particularly from Luana's response, is being able to adapt. Um, and you're correct, a lot of times we see, you know, people get really good at doing one thing, and then God forbid something happens and suddenly it's like the sky is falling. Um, and um, do not take the time to step into that black hole, that quiet space and say, okay, this is my business, this is the challenge, how can I make it through the next challenge? Like, What changes do I have to make? And I'll use the tourism industry, I wasn't in it at the time, but during COVID, um, switch from the target market being incoming visitors to staycations, right? Suddenly our properties were actually marketing to the local population. Um, some of them were able to pull it off and pull it off really well to the point where it's something now that's a regular part of their, their marketing plan. Um, but being adapt adaptive, is that a word? <laughs> <laughs> is really, really key to the success of any business. Now, strategic planning, that's another, uh, particularly long-term strategic planning, is also key to the success of any business because then although you can't foresee a COVID, in Dominica you could foresee a tropical storm or a hurricane and you plan accordingly. Um, uh, farmers, for example, I'm bringing them in, um, could factor in when they're doing the strategic planning and their, um, their numbers, they could plan for in the event of a loss, how do I rebuild my structures and replant my crops? So all of these things are really, really um, key to the success of businesses. So thank you guys for your response. Yes, they all tie in. They all tie in. Very much, very much so. And you know, today top, today's topic is how do you work your cash? And so far we've gotten a few responses on exactly how to work your cash. So I just want to keep in mind, um, to put in your mind, understanding your risk, ensuring your property, the business itself, the persons, and not forgetting the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way. Um, savings, of course, yes. And uh, analyzing your financial system, managing and ensuring that you save, you try your best to save a bit, and be strategic. I know Luana mentioned that, and I really want to touch on that again, being strategic. And these are just some key ways of how you work your cash, again, to work for you. I think that's, that's the main point at the, of, at the end of the day. Um, I think Bria has a <coughs> question that she, wa she wants to put towards the group. I know we have a short time. Yes. So um, one, of the, one of the questions that I have is regarding um, financial literacy. Um, where do you think we stand as an island nation? Um, in terms of educating our population about financial literacy um, and how important it is that we all have a working knowledge of finances and how to manage and operate within, within that sphere. <laughs> Equal rights for the men. <laughs> I am going to go a step further, and um, I don't think it's a nation challenge. I think it's an international challenge where not enough emphasis is placed on financial literacy from the grassroots level, I mean, from school. I know in recent times, Florida has introduced a financial literacy course in a curriculum that you must pass in order to graduate. I think New York recently just implemented one. Mm -hmm. 
because they understand the challenge, which is we train persons on academics, but when they go into real life, they don't know how to save. They don't know about debit cards and credit cards and investments and insurance, and they know are playing catch up. And in a lot of instances, people find themselves in situations that they could have avoided had they known, especially with credit cards. I know of persons who had free maxed out cards under the age of 30 because the education was not there. I believe that at some point it shouldn't just be two states in the world. It should be a worldwide movement where financial literacy is introduced. But until that is done, we even weaving our own rights have to see where we can assist. So programs like this contribute towards financial literacy through the work of Finance Focus, through my daily social media posting. It's all about trying to give persons information and knowledge that they did not have access to in school. Once that is done, that will gradually transform nations and countries. Now, for me, from an insurance perspective, using just life insurance, I'll use life and health on property. From a life perspective, I tell persons, now picture a scenario where every household has persons insured. That is their life. That means every time someone dies, it is sort of, I wouldn't say a celebration, but <laughs> there is more positivity in that is not just looking for money to bury the person, but the money is available, plus there's money to give to the rest of the family to the invest. Burden, the burden is generational wealth. Brilliant. This, this Master P, if you don't know. <laughs> oh my God, we're going to <laughs> His <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> we're going to have. <laughs> his grandfather had a life insurance policy for $10,000. And that is what he used to turn into $250 so life insurance in every household gradually can transform the economy. That is more investors, that is more financial stability, that is more independence for our people. Health insurance now, I'm happy for what the government recently did, which is allow us to claim for premiums paid against health insurance. Because what it does is that it makes us more responsible. Rather than having to depend on the state for assistance, we can now get our own coverage and we're able to reduce our income tax liability at the end of the day. And from a resilience perspective, it ensures that more funds are available to the government to invest in developing the country. The government is doing a very good job with the housing program, but imagine if everybody had insurance, property insurance before. That means no money would have been spent, well, not no, but less money would have been spent on this housing program, more money to develop the country, and we would have been all happy and you know, in a better place. So it's a good move that they have made to try to encourage us. But it cannot stop there. We, as I mentioned, within our rights, the different associations, the different professionals have to go a step further and find ways to educate persons because coincided, some of us are specialists in our field. I love insurance. I love accounting. I help. <laughs> <laughs> I help people in those areas where I can. There are some areas where... I cannot assist, but there are others who can provide that assistance. And over time, gradually, you, we never know how far the change will be. If we can just change one life, improve one life, that person can then improve someone else, and eventually we'll be in a better position. I think that, that leads into um, Luana, because I think that finance focus, that's almost almost a part of the function of our finance focus. I don't want to speak for you. It's our foundation. The foundation. <laughs> so that's correct. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about, about the, the topic, financial literacy? It's a piggyback of Brenton here. He spoke of the international reach. But locally and regionally, we see many different institutions leaning towards an increase in financial literacy as of late. We as individuals place more focus on financial management right now because of our experiences of the past. Erica, Maria, COVID. We see the importance of proper financial management because of what we experienced back then. And that is great because many years ago, the topic of money was taboo. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of negative connotations surrounding money because when we think of money, only think of spending. Most of us think of spending. 
<laughs> the However, bills. <laughs> I want to commend many of the institutions here recently. We see a lot of financial institutions taking taking an increased interest in educating their membership about financial literacy and management because they see the effect of that on their businesses. And we have institutions like the Small Business Units and DYBT and DAIC which offers training Thank you. <laughs> for micro and small businesses to focus on their business management but also on the personal finance side. There are many tools as well that are available within our market that can help us improve our financial literacy. Uh, when we think of investing, we, most people might think it's in the international market to buy stocks and bonds. But we can start investing right here mm -hmm. by investing in our credit unions. That way it helps us to sustain our economy. We can consider, consider contributing to our social security fund. There are different ways and tools that we can use to improve our financial literacy. And of course, through the DIC and other is associations, you know, Finance Focus is always there to support when it comes to financial literacy. We continue to, to break that taboo and show people that learning about money can be fun. Money is, is an energy, it's psychology. Once you change your mindset around money, you can open up a whole new world for yourself and your generation in the future. Yeah. Oh, Luana just said something. And I had to take note of it. Because I, I, I will be using this whether or not um, I'm posting on social media as I was speaking to my friends. Money is an energy. It is. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. And uh, I really just want to touch on what Luana said um, because it, it comes back into the whole point that we, we are speaking about here. How do you work your cash? And how do you make it work for you later on? And... Uh, the trainings are available. You have trainings from DIC. Um, we do trainings for small businesses. So again, while we're here, you know, quick um, plug. Plug. Uh, <laughs> look out for upcoming trainings and um, meetings, seminars, even breakfast um, activities that we're looking to have throughout the year. And we will be touching and going more in depth with financial management, giving you the opportunity to not just hear from lovely speakers like Brenton and Luana, but being able to speak to them, speak to these people directly, ask the questions that you want to ask, um, not just hearing things on social media or picking up things through any sort of media, but being able to directly speak to them. So stay tuned to our social media and that is Dominica, Dominica Chambers for sure. <laughs> and. Um, DHTA, the, the, the sometimes it's a bit of a title, yes. but DHTA also um, provides training yes. um, to their members, um, that's the members in the tourism field, tourism hospitality. It, our field. trainings are actually open to anybody when we have it. So oh, we have right. two, the, the fee is just different. So if you're a member, you have get a discounted, you pay a discounted fee, um, but we offer two trainings um, a year. Uh, it's called the Act Talk Workshops. So the first one we did was in, for 2024, was in January. The next one will be in July. And that one, the focus will be on customer service training and human resource development. So how do you manage your staff? How do you train your staff on customer service? So we, you know, it, it's open to anybody. Anybody can come into those trainings and um, it, it's going to be a fun experience. I'll make it a fun experience. <laughs> Great, yeah. And that's just another way, again, of making your cash work for you because you need to invest in yourself. The only way you're able to be able to get the full benefits and take advantage of opportunities is being able to learn how to, understanding the elements regarding cash, the energy behind money. <laughs> um, look out again for the DIC. We are looking to have a program on um, exam issues. You will, we will be having that sometime in April. Again, so we're going to be diving more into the filing and information when it comes to businesses and ensuring that you, you have your legality in, in your docs in a row when it comes to legality. So we will be having 
that session very soon. Um, it's a breakfast event called Eggs and Issues, so look out for that fire. I know we're going to have fun. We will have, um, of course, Brenton and Luana will be there for sure, so you can have more in-depth conversation with them. Um, I'm seeing that we're coming close to our end time um, today. It's I feel like we just started this session. <laughs> I know, I didn't realize. <laughs> when, you're having, when you're having fun and you're having discussions, um, these things, they go quickly. So, again, we are every last Wednesday of the month. We're going to be hitting some hard hitting topics, some areas that it's, it needs to be touched on in Dominica. Um, we will be having great guest speakers mm -hmm. that's going to be speaking again on how do you manage certain areas. So today we spoke on financial management and we will be, or we may be bringing this topic back, but we'll, we will be having other topics like digital transformation, we'll be looking at marketing, custom, customer service, We'll be looking at human resource development and lots, lots more topic. So again, that's going to be every last Wednesday of the month. We'll be right here on Kyrie FM from 7 to 8 p.m. talking about business. I love it. Before we go, I just have a quick um, plug. DHTA is hosting um, Hike Fest this year in May. So we'll be hiking different trails every Saturday this year. So... When you're budgeting, please budget your, your fee for um, to participate in Hike Fest <laughs> events. Call us at DHTA 767-275-7454 um, and um, or go on our Facebook page, go on Hike Fest, um, our in Instagram page, and you can sign up. The forms are online. So we're looking forward to seeing you there. Yeah, and just how we are sharing this space right now, we share an office. <laughs> so if you're interested in joining the membership, being a part Come on of down. the DHTA or being a part of the DIC and taking advantage of the opportunities. Because like Ria said earlier, every activity that we'll be having, mm -hmm. there is a smaller fee mm -hmm. for members and there's a different fee for non-members. So everyone can take advantage of the opportunities. Yes. However, if you are a member of the DHTA or a member of the DIC, based on the program, um, or the session that's mm -hmm. being held, you will get benefits from that. So I hope to see you guys at our Eggs and Issues or at the Hike Fest. The Hike sure. Fest coming we'll up there. and our Act Talk workshop in the summer. Awesome. Yes. So we just want to say thank you again for listening to Talking Business in 60 <laughs> Minutes. Um, our hosts, Brenton and Luana, we really want to thank you guys so much for being here. Um, my president and treasurer, thank you so much for supporting this program. Um, we will be having, we will be messaging our our partners. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have giveaways coming up in our upcoming episodes and sessions. So again, just be part of the program. Thank you again so much for being here. Thank you for listening, and we look to see you next Wednesday. That's the last Wednesday in April.
to ride.